welcome to the pilot episode of the Running AI Podcast. We are delighted to finally get started. My name is Aaron Mutal, and I'm the host alongside my partner in crime, co-host, Mr. Heis. You know what? I don't even actually know how to pronounce your last name. Maybe I should let you do it in a second. Um, anyways, we're marketers at Run AI, and if you aren't familiar with us, we've actually built... How would you describe us today now, Heis? That's, that's that's a great first question. So I would <laughs> I, I would describe ourselves as a um, a platform that delivers dynamic AI workload integration, basically um, making sure that the right resources get to the right people at the right time. I like it. Uh, I like to call us basically uh, an like a virtual a, a super scheduler in that we combine orchestration with virtualization into one end-to-end -end platform um, anyways if you want to learn more about our company run ai feel free to visit our website www.run.ai you can learn more um if maybe i can just say also last plug a shameless plug about us we had a nice day yesterday our series c raised 75 million very cool you can see a lot more about that as well Go on our go to our website. Okay, Heis. I actually said I didn't know how to pronounce your last name. First of all, thanks a lot for, for agreeing to do this podcast with me. Could you introduce yourself, where you're from, what's your story, and how do you actually say your name? Absolutely. I think this is um, the start of many of my conversations with anyone who's not Dutch. <laughs> so first, first little info about me, I'm Dutch, uh, hence the name. So let me try to... Um, Pronounce it slowly. So it's Gijsbert Janssen van Dorn. But after all these years working with um, non-Dutch speaking people, I, I've come to accept any pronunciation of my name. So uh, don't worry about it. Like I said, I'm based in the Netherlands. I live in this wonderful city called Arnhem, which is very sunny right now. So you can see it on my face. I'm, I'm in front of two windows. For anyone who's watching the video uh, on YouTube with the video actually enabled, this is sun on my face. I'm very white uh, colored because of the fact that we don't get sun a lot. So I don't get a chance to uh, to get a tan, um, but I'm working on it. Um, I'm uh, the uh, responsible for technical product marketing at RunAI. Um, and my background isn't necessarily marketing. My background is systems engineering. Um, I used to be an SC at a, uh, another Israeli-based company called Zerto, uh, who delivers a platform for data protection and disaster recovery uh, um, for IT infrastructure. Um, and um, working there as many years as an SE, I made the switch to what some might refer to the dark side, but marketing, um, <laughs> more specifically technical marketing. Uh, which I very much enjoyed. And um, through my network and through working with people, I ended up at this side. very, very exciting place on AI. Sweet. You have you have a couple kids, right? I've got two kids. I've got two kids, age five and eight. Um, daughter is the youngest one. Son is the oldest one. And um, they keep me busy whenever I'm not working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same for me. So thanks, Heis. Um, a little bit about myself as well. Um, I, I'm i new to marketing, the dark side, as if you will. Uh, I came from sales both as an AE as an, and an SDR for a number of years. Actually, if you're listening to this podcast and you don't know what those two terms were, AE, account executive, that's like a closer uh, in the software industry. And the SDR, sales development representative, is kind of like a, a support uh, sales role for that account executive. Anyways, so I've been working uh, in, in SaaS sales for a number of years, moved over officially to the dark side of marketing a little over a year ago. Um, I do live in Israel, but I grew up outside, just outside of LA, and I'm married also with three young kids. Uh, as you said, hi, it's never a dull moment. Um, one day I hope to actually take acting lessons. Um, I'm a coffee fanatic. Actually, I have a coffee hat here somewhere. I'm kind of jammed on uh, right at the moment uh, on some caffeine. So we should maybe somehow throw in some of that, uh, like my favorite coffees at some point. Anyways, um, most of the time when I'm working, I work in my old man robe, 
It's like I was thinking about wearing it on the on this inaugural episode here, but you know, like now I gotta be a little bit more serious. Um, and anything else I want to say about myself? Um, well, I do hope to go back to school. I think one day uh, I want to study maybe psychology, I like to study people or economics, the economics of people, like behavioral economics um, and history. Anyways, um, yeah, people just fascinate me. And that's how I got into this idea of I wanted to start a podcast um, to go on like a more serious note. When I joined Run AI, the intention was always to go into marketing. I did a couple quarters in sales to, you know, to pay my due, so to speak. And I told them when I get into marketing, I wanted to launch a podcast for the AI space, not knowing that over the last three years, it got pretty busy in this space. Um, but you know, our leadership loved it. And they asked me, hi, I don't even know if you know this, but they asked me like, so what exactly would you like to do? Um, and I basically said, I want to do like an interview based podcast with thought leaders in the world of AI. Um, and let, and hopefully enable it to be as expansive as possible in that I would like, of course, AI practitioners to get use out of this podcast. But I'm also kind of hoping that people that have absolutely no background in AI can get at least some use out of this podcast or a lot as well. Um, so that's kind of how I brought this uh, idea to the company. They loved it. Again, as I said, Heis joined, I think, a year and a half after me. And Heis, you you were totally game to, to do this with me, so that's awesome. Um, but Heis probably has, you have probably a lot of better ideas or, or solid ideas of how to actually make this work. So I want to pick your brain on that uh, in this episode. But there's one last thing I want to say about myself if I can, because there's one thing I forgot about myself, which is my nicknames. Um, so one nickname has been given to me at every company. Everybody calls me the same thing, which is if you're familiar with the Key and Peel episode, um, my name is Aaron, right? So everybody calls me A.A. Ron, which I don't dislike. But I have a, a self-given nickname. Uh, it's from when I was a kid, and it's a total, you know, another story for another day, but uh, it's El Presidente. That's what I like to call myself. I got my old man robe. I'm El Presidente. I got my coffee. That's me in a, in a nutshell. Anyways, yeah, so to go back to, again to the serious thing here is I think what I'm thinking with this podcast here is – to kind of talk anything and everything AI from the most sensitive issues in AI to the most random use cases of AI and to do so with the, the top thought leaders or, you know, thought leaders uh, in the world of AI um, and let them um, be interviewed by us and, and give us both educational but also, you know, to a uh, certainly to a degree entertaining content. Um, that's my thinking and hi is, you know, now I want to kind of turn it over to you to get, get your thoughts on how you want to structure this. No, I, I, I think I, I agree with you. I think one, one thing I noticed is when I joined running, I coming from it infrastructure, um, boring data protection. No, it was very exciting at the time. Um, but jumping into AI, there was so much to learn. There are so many things I, I I needed to dive into and watch videos on and read articles on, yeah. Um, and that that got me like really interested because um, one, the way AI is being applied in the field out there right now is so fascinating, it's so extremely cool. Um, Do you think then, it also gets to a point where it's could potentially be even a little bit scary? Every now and then. Um, yeah, yeah. we, I, 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 I'd like to think that, um, but the coolness, the coolness factor outweighs the scariness factor. I think a hundred percent. I mean, yeah, they're, yeah. they're, uh, the, the, the cool, the, the, the number of cool projects out there right now being built, being experimented with, um, is it's, it's, it's insane, but I'd like to always relate it back to my comfort area, my comfort zone. Okay. Uh, which is IT infrastructure. Um, so um, so boring, but yes. I know it's very boring. <laughs> I'm I, just I, I have no, I have to dig into it because all these great AI projects. I mean, coding 
something is one thing. Yep. But it needs to be coded on something on some we're using some framework, using infrastructure, using this, using that. So the more I started digging into, okay, what's the what's the process behind it? Right. Um, what are some of the practices being used? What are some of the technology being used? I I think the the proper way to refer to it is um, it's it's a jungle. It's a jungle out there of tools, practices. Um, Interesting. OK, that's so. Yeah. OK, keep going. And I, and I have another word that I that floats through my head about the world of AI. But that you're talking about, I think, on the infrastructure side. Oh, yes. That was that was to me the, yeah. the big the big thing where I needed to learn. Right. Uh, I've, I've gone through so many things in, in IT infrastructure from on-prem to cloud to DevOps, all these these things that are happening. And now I'm I'm in a space where it's it's that jungle that it was like decades ago in IT, like regular IT infrastructure, like more traditional software development. And that's where I, I, I wanted to get some some clarity there. So I started digging into this and I started doing my research. And honestly, I'm, I really missed a podcast that addressed all of those different things in like different episodes. So when you approached me, I was like, that's the first thing I thought, oh, great. We can talk about MLOps. We can talk about how AI is being applied. We can talk about cool projects. We can talk about GPUs. We can talk about other um, AI accelerators, but I wanted to talk about everything. Now, if people that work in the world of AI know what GPUs are. If you're not familiar, graphic processing units, a lot of the heavy duty AI research that's being conducted um, is conducted using very powerful compute resources, or and in this case, the best uh, form of compute pro probably is GPUs. So yeah, sorry. No, absolutely. Is that right? Just, Yep, GPUs are 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 being used all over the place. Specifically, like the the deep learning yeah. uh, aspect of uh, of AI, uh, but it's 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 so fascinating to look at all of those elements. Um, and one thing I'd like to do with this podcast is whoever joins, whatever guest we we have on this podcast, talk to them about the journey, about how they survived or got out of of this jungle okay that makes okay got it makes a lot of sense so the word so you use the word jungle that's especially in terms of kind of putting together all the pieces with the hardware the software making sense of what works what doesn't work i just think of the actual like what what the world of, of data science and ai is doing the word that has been coming to my mind for the last few years is like a rocket ship. Everybody talks about like these startups that are rocket ships uh, or like welcome to the rocket ship. To me, like when I think of the, the pace at which AI seems to be accelerating and be, being accepted as, as a, um, as like de facto something that an organization or university, whatever should be doing, it's just, it's sweeping the world. It seems like pretty quickly. Um, I guess that kind of gets back to the the scariness piece, but I think it's more the coolness piece at the end of the day, um, and it's less to do. I it, it that's the rocket ship piece. I guess maybe it does tie back to the jungle in the sense of things are moving at such a crazy fast pace that people that are e either AI practitioners or supporting AI AI practitioners need to they need to make sense of this jungle quickly um, and how they're doing that at record speed. Um, that's interesting. Um, 100% agree. Very interesting. So, but, you know, I, I think maybe some people might be wondering, um, like, if we're going to be covering a specific topic in AI, like, uh, healthcare or autonomous vehicles, I would say neural networks, neural networks. I think it's anything and everything. Now, I, you know, as we're doing this, I kind of have this, um, I kind of have this, 
sorry for TV fans. Like this just takes me back to like, I'm imagining you and you and me guys, like we're pitching this to run AI's executive leadership, including our investors. And they're like, so you have a podcast about AI, but what is it about exactly? And we say everything and they say, everything sounds like nothing. And you go like, exactly nothing. And it just takes me back to Larry David and Seinfeld. Like, <laughs> sorry, it's coming through my head right now. Anyways, um, no, this is not a podcast, an AI podcast about nothing. Um, but I, I hope we can keep it really educational and entertaining at a broad level for, for a wide audience. That's to me, I hope we can do that. Um, percent agree. I think it, it depends on our guests and, uh, how you and me have been working on a list. Right. I'd say, I mean, subscribe because there are de definitely coming some, some great guests on this podcast. That's the other thing I want to say. Anybody who listens to this episode, whether it's right after we publish it or way out in the future, please reach out to us, suggest topics that you want us to get out there. Maybe it's a topic that's sensitive to you or exciting to you. Maybe it's a topic that you feel you have some degree of ownership over. Uh, maybe you could be an interesting person for us to, to chat with. Um, the, the framework I'm kind of thinking here, highs is episodes being like 25 or 30 minutes at length. So it's something that you can do, you know, something you can digest, um, maybe as you're making a salad or I don't know, um, doing a walk during a walk. There you go. Right. Like you, you listen to your podcast during your morning or afternoon walks, right? Yeah, every, every day, every morning, my, my morning walk is my morning walk is the distance is determined by the length of the podcast. Or at least that's what I try to do. Oh, wow. I have podcasts that take 90 minutes uh, that I'll listen to. And I have podcasts that take 20 minutes. But most of the times for the 20 minutes one, just to make sure that everybody gets that I'm doing the right amount of exercise, I listen to two. There you go. Nice. So I tend to listen to my podcasts um, either on the way to the office or on the way home in my car. Um, it's like when I'm in that mood, not for music. And it's, you know, so, and I have a long commute, so... I can tee up a few at the same time. Um, also, besides the length, again, like 25, 30 minutes, that's that's what we, we're, we're kind of aiming for here. Um, probably monthly this year, right? So we'll get 10 to 10, 11 out this year. Um, maybe we could do twice a month, but I just think it's it, it could be hard. Because this is, by the way, just for everybody listening, this is not my day job, and it's also not Heiss's day job. It's, it's kind of a, a nice little cherry on the top for both of us. Um, you know, I would love to be able to just do a brief intro with our guests as obviously kind of a natural intro, let them have some time within that 25, 30 minute space to let everybody know who they are, what's their background, kind of give that context. And then we'll go into a core topical discussion where in particular, I'm a lot less technical, of course, than highs, uh, where highs can have a, a proper informed technical conversation. Um, and then what I would love to do, Heise, is hopefully end every episode um, with like a lightning round of random questions that everybody can, you know, look forward to. Maybe like the lightning round. That's like that'd be like my favorite part if I was listening, um, just to kind of get get a sense of who the guest actually is um, and some random things about them that would be pretty cool to know. Um, what do you think? I, I, I agree. That would be fun. And um, the one thing I'd like to emphasize again is we, when we say it's about anything and everything AI. Sorry. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. What are you yeah. saying? <laughs> no, I think, I think the, the focus is AI practitioners. Oh, okay. In the, yeah. Yeah. In, in the full spectrum of it. Right. Whether you're a data scientist or you're the one delivering compute to data scientists and anything that's in between, that would be interesting to us because we want to talk about every aspect of that AI journey, how it's being applied, how it's being developed, how it's running, where it's, I mean, every aspect of it. And I think yeah. that would make um, um, it very interesting. You know, I also, I think, 
some of the lineup of people that we're, we're talking about joining, they're also at, you know, they're in, they're in unique roles. They're in think tanks. They're in, you know, so I'm also thinking some of these people that have come on, they may not be maybe on a day-to-day -day basis, the practitioner, but what they're doing is certainly, it's very deep in the weeds of AI, if you will. Um, yeah, so, okay. Um, well, personally, I think it'd be kind of cool to do a lightning round with you at some point, Heise. I don't know if we have time. Uh, I don't know how long we've already been talking, but um, what, what do you think? Are you game? Okay, okay, go ahead. All right, okay. So, um, let me see. Let me get my questions up. I, I did oh, write them down. This. I pr oh, dude, are you Wonderful. kidding? All right, here we go. Question number one. Um, name the person you'd most like to have dinner with. It could be living or historical, and say why. Wow, you should have sent me these questions beforehand. Oh, no, no, it's that's better the fun this way. part of it. That's the right? fun part of this. Yeah. This is probably going to be a very boring. The founder of Heineken. And no, sorry. No, <laughs> no. Not a big fan here. Um, <laughs> By the way, sh shameless plug, we do have our, our Lunch and Learn series. It's called Beers with Engineers. Um, check out Highs there. He always drinks some sort of beer during the Beers with Engineers. Um, no sales guys are there. It's, it's just an educational experience. Um, it's enjoyable. Consume it with the beer on us. Okay, yeah, sorry. Absolutely. So, the, shameless plug. It's, that's a shameless plug. I, I think, <laughs> I think it would be my great grandfather who I've never interesting personally met. Um there's there's a lot of there's a lot of unknowns, but there's a lot of knowns of my the family and 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 how we got to where we are right now and and there's a very interesting history. And I never really got the full story because my uh, my granddad actually uh, uh, passed away when I was very young, so I never really got to connect with him. Uh. Um, so I'd like to go back as long as possible into really my family and their very interesting um, um, life. And I think that's I'd love to have dinner with him and talk about it. So okay, now I I mean I actually this is totally random but i've always thought i would love to know i think i'd love to know who my great 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 ancestors were from like f four centuries ago and i think i said i think because i don't know if they're like mass murderers or something then maybe i wouldn't want to know but um yeah um okay it's cool so somebody close to your family um for me um I got to say if I living or historical um you know oh god this is this is sort of it's it's sort of a religious answer or whatever but uh I'm going to say the mid-century Spanish philosopher Maimonides he's pro I don't know do you know who that is no sorry about okay. that no no it's all good he was like uh he was a rabbi but he was like a lead physician of his day as well uh, he published a lot on on health in his day. In fact, he became like the court physician in Egypt or something. Whatever. He's just, and then he wrote a ton of philosophy, and he tried to make a synthesis of like Talmudic, rabbinic Judaism with Greek philosophy. I don't know if he really succeeded, but uh, he tried it at least. Very interesting dude. Um, and I've always just wanted. I, I wish I could like be able to sit with him and pick his brain a little bit. Anyways. All right, cool. I like your response. Let's go to question number two. If you didn't have the career, you the the amazing career that you have as a technical product manager. All right, sorry, technical product marketing leader. What would you be doing instead right now? I would be an architect. Art Vandalay. Sorry, Seinfeld. Um, wait. Okay. Why? So that was actually the. Um, the job I, what I wanted to be when I was young, I was always drawing. I actually, I still, maybe for some other podcasts and the ones that are watching the video, I still have a drawing of the house I designed myself 
at age 11 at my parents place yeah nothing has changed it's still it's still it would still be my dream house on scale everything um but i wanted to be an architect i wanted to design houses um, that's pretty sweet. specifically houses not like um like office buildings but like where people would live and um a hundred percent if i wouldn't have picked this if i wouldn't got addicted to my 486 essex 33 computer um when my dad bought it for me i would have been an architect all right so i i have kind of like two answers one is i think i would have loved I, you know being a journalist and barista at the same time like being like being a a host at my own coffee shop, coffee, uh, you know, coffee shop that I owned and bringing in cool people to, to speak to and pick their brain. Um, or, or to be, uh, an educator of some sort, maybe history. Um, cause I definitely have a lot of, uh, passion and, and curiosity in those two different, two, di two areas. All right. So number three, What's the top destination on your, you and your uh, girlfriend's vacation bucket list and why? And have you already been there? Ooh, that's a great question. The, the, the funny thing is um, my girlfriend and I have very different opinions on where <laughs> we need to travel. But I, yep. I, I, I think we can both agree that uh, the, the one very high on, on our list is, is Australia. Opa, nice. And um, yeah, why? I've I've been there twice actually. I've done both west and and the eastern part of it. Um, I kind of fell in love with it. I I really like it, and I'd love to show it to my to my girlfriend, and she's never been there. Okay, so you say west and east, meaning like, what do they call it? Uh, like everything above Sydney on the east coast is that the east coast? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's east. Yeah, so I did Sydney to Cairns, and um, then the 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 other time I went from Darwin to Perth, so that's a little bit more. I have a cousin in Perth. I've never met, but I've, I have a cousin there. Um, nice, definitely on. That's okay. So. For me, these are like totally opposite destinations, but I have two. Um, I, I haven't been to either, but definitely I want to go to like some do some crazy trip in Alaska. I knew some. Um, anyways, I'll leave it at that on Alaska. I, no, I have not been there. And the other is, and I think I can convince my wife who does not like cold weather to do Alaska if I can, you know, demonstrate that she'll have all the warm accommodations she needs. The other one that she definitely does not want to do, she said to find a buddy to do it with me is safari. I, I, you know, uh, I like watching those national geographic videos or BBC, you know, like Savannah, <laughs> the lions and hyenas and, uh, elephants and I just, uh, we gotta, I, I gotta go there. I gotta do a safari one day. Um, all right, cool. So let's look at, we, there's two more questions or maybe there's just one more. Uh, okay, here we go. Question number four, the best book you have read recently and why? Tell us about it. Okay. I, and this is something I, I probably should have told you. I am not a book reader. I could figure that out from your intellect. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I thank you so much. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll bleep that out as well. Yeah. Okay. I, I see. I'm editing this podcast. Yes, Just so yes. everybody knows. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I don't read books. So the last book I read was probably in high school. Mandatory silent reading book or mandatory uh, Dutch literature book? Yes, mandatory book. And I can't remember which one. <laughs> and and besides that, I, I love to learn. 
Like it's my, it's my motto, never stop learning. But I, I, I need to do it my way, which means I'm reading an article and I see something interesting, a specific topic. I then dig into that topic, reading other articles, watching videos, Googling. It makes I, a lot of sense. It's more of a research thing than, than actually sitting down to read a book. I, I read books for like getting certified and all kinds of things in technology, but I, I don't consider that a reading a book. But, um, and besides that, I, I read articles and like tutorials and snippets. I, I don't read full books. Sorry. I'm not the no, reading no. type. All good. Um, okay. No, that's, that's great. Um, hmm. So the last book that I read in full, well, you know, I got to tell you when you have three kids, a four month old and the last book I read in full probably was before, I mean, definitely before my baby was born. Um, and I believe it was a novel. Yeah, it was a novel about, it was an, a Hebrew novel that I read in English because I don't read Hebrew well enough to read a novel. Um, but it was about, it was very apropos what was before me. It was a short uh, novella, is that the word? Um, about, um, you know, a short story about a dad and his new son. And it had some dark and then lighter twist to it. Um, I forgot the name in English. Uh, the, he's a very famous author in Israel, Albet Yehoshua. Um, uh, anyways, um, it taught me a lot because he, he definitely wrote a story that was intended to make a parent think about his or her role vis-a-vis -vis a child in terms of, you know, raising a healthy child. Um, and it sort of uh, helped kind of scare me straight of being like, you got to take fatherhood seriously. So anyways, um, let me get closer. Uh, anyways, it was a good book. It had some dark pieces to it. Um, anyways, so this has been a pretty fun opening lightning round of the two of us. In the future, there'll be of our guests. As long oh, as I'm already going. looking forward to it. Yeah. So I think our first bet guest in, in the next episode is going to be somebody internally that's that's definitely a, uh, you know, is I would say qualifies as a thought leader in AI. Um, and we'll be back. Um, I want to say thanks a lot to Ron AI also for letting us do this, um, giving us the space to, and creativity to try to come up with this in the first place. Absolutely. Uh, and thanks a lot, Mr. Heis. Um and to everybody in our audience, actually, thanks for listening. Please stay tuned. Uh, we'll be updating you soon once we do have our next episode actually um, lined up. And until next time, cheers and be well. The Running AI Podcast. Thank you so much, Aaron. Thanks, everyone, for listening. It was fun. It was. Cheers. <laughs>